we're going to get started. If we have some latecomers, we'll just uh, let them in and uh, they'll just have to pick up the presentation from where we're at. So uh, welcome everybody for attending uh, today's labor market information session. We are today talking about the landscaping and snow removal industry, which you know what, we invited the snow to come just for this, uh, for the topic today, lots of snow out there. And so um, lots to talk about with uh, landscaping and snow removal. Um, my name's Wanda Burton. I'm an employment support specialist with Ontario Works London and my partner, Joanna is on here as well. And she's gonna monitor the chat um, for any questions that you have. So if you have any questions, just type that into the chat. Um, also, before we go any further, I just want to let everybody know that we are recording uh, the session so that it can go on the uh, City of London website uh, where participants can view, anybody from the public actually can view uh, these recorded sessions. So let me introduce our, our group today. We have uh, Brittany Thompson from uh, Youth Opportunities Unlimited. She has uh, graciously took the lead on uh, the presentation today and developed the slide deck for us and involved the other participants, which include the uh, Grant Watford from Lending Training Center, um, Carissa Luker from Goodwill Industries. Um, we have Christy, Christy Sebastian from Landscape Ontario. And we have Mike Crosby from Greenhouse Academy. And I believe he's also an employer with Crosby Landscaping, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And we may have somebody from um, TLC Landscaping, but we're not quite sure about that. I guess the snow removal companies are busy right now because of the heavy snowfall we just had. So it has been a little bit difficult to get one of the, those employers to uh, come today. So without further ado, Brittany, take it on. All right, thank you, Wanda. So yes, this is our landscaping and snow removal uh, presentation. And then for our presenters, uh, once I finish the slide, I'll ask if we have any other input to put in and then uh, we will open it up the floor to all of our presenters um, for each slide um, as discussed before. So uh, for the example of what is it like to work in this sector and what is a spectrum of jobs available from entry level or more experienced individuals. Uh, so there is seasonal work um, in the spring and summer for landscaping and then snow removal in the winter primarily. Uh, some of the seasonal work for landscaping also goes into the fall for leaf collection and uh, last minute of uh, mowing the lawns. Uh, it involves early mornings, weekdays, and weekends. Uh, own transportation really broadens those employment opportunities. So if you do have a driver's license or own transportation, um, that really does help expand your uh, horizons into finding employment. However, I do know with a few employers um, that they have been able to provide transportation uh, for, the for the employees uh, to get to that job site. For some entry level job titles that you're looking for, it's usually a laborer or a crew member. This is what I've kind of found off of Indeed. And for experienced job titles, um, there's been foreman, landscape designer, operators, etc. cetera. Um, so there's lots of different job titles to kind of look on depending on your experience in the snow removal or the landscaping industry. Uh, presenters, do we have anything else to add on this slide? No, all right. I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the next is what are the current wages and benefits and what does this translate to in terms of money in my real pocket is the next question. So um, I've looked on quite a few different employment uh, air industries for the landscaping and snow removal and saw that there are some group benefits available. It really does depend on that company for availability. Um, it usually happens after your three month or one year probation. Um, some employers also provide a safety gear allowance to cover for PPE. So some have been able to provide uh, steel toe work boots, um, safety glasses, uh, whatever you can kind of think of uh, for a landscaping position, they might have an allowance for that. Um, some employers also offer a lot of career advancement and training opportunities. So maybe it is to um, get that license to work on uh, working on the operator side of things or um, learning how to become more of a foreman with that leadership opportunities as well. 
Wages are really determined based on that experience and level of position of the self. Um, so I looked on Indeed and a few other job um, websites and saw that snow removal currently is anywhere between $16 to $23 an hour. Um, landscape laborers are anywhere from $17 to $21 an hour. And a landscape designer, there's currently a position open and that salary is $60,000 to $80,000 a year. So there are um, a lot of range in the uh, types of uh, salary expectations, and it's really dependent on experience. Is there anyone that would like to um, cover anything additionally as well? I could nope. maybe add something, maybe, I guess. Sure. Just just even adding to that and for snow removal, kind of like your basic um, shoveling positions are kind of like your 16 to 23. And then if you are someone who has a license um, and would maybe get in, into actually plowing with a truck or tractor, um, you can very quickly get up to $30 an hour um, for being an operator like that. So in having your own transportation, you're, you're way up there on the, on the high side of that number for sure. Wow. Thanks, Mike. Did not know yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Long-term prospects in the sector and talking about stability, uh, the, a lot of employers in the area have been talking about the possibility of year-round employment as if you're great as a landscaper or snow removal, um, they'll want to keep you on for the season uh, all year round. Um, I know that when I first started off as uh, in an in employment industry that a lot of employers were talking about, you know, you, you take the season, you go off on EI and you come back. And, and I'm noticing that it's, that's not really the case anymore in uh, London, Ontario, where it's more of if you do good this season, like I want to keep you on for the following seasons, which is um, really good to see um, because then it, it keeps you for employment uh, longer term. There's also a lot of long-term prospects with the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people are staying at home and investing in their, um, in their own homes. And that includes uh, landscape design to beautify their homes. So I'm not sure if Mike can uh, extend a little bit more on this, but I'm very sure that there's a lot more landscape design and landscaping uh, opportunities that have come up due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and also just that both snow and grass is accumulating and, and grows. <laughs> um, so it's inevitable that, that both of these things need to be maintained and therefore there will always be jobs in snow removal and, and landscaping. So uh, Mike, did you maybe want to touch base a little bit about landscape design? Uh, well, I would just say it's definitely, um, I guess, definitely a growing field and like, just like that state, like the, this has easily been everyone's busiest year um, and uh, like the, the demand for um, landscape construction teams is like is through the roof and um, like stonemasons, concrete workers, plantings, and then then designers. Like the, for us, all of these landscape projects, the, the first step is is landscape design. And the reality is, it's it is incredibly hard to find a good designer. And once you find one, they're booked for uh, over a year. So um, it's kind of a it's a, a cool field where there, I guess not a lot of uh, it's, something for landscape design, not necessarily a field that um, it gets talked a lot about. There's not a lot of kids maybe going through high school that have that pinned on their on their board as a, a potential career, but um, no, definitely like a valuable, valuable skill set. And uh, yeah, definitely just a booming time right now for sure. And Christy, I think you'd like to speak as well. Oh yeah, just to add to Mike's point, um, we've observed from our end looking at the labor market that there's there's consistently been a shortage of um, skilled laborers for our field. So that like in turn has resulted in a lot of companies ending up being booked like years in advance for projects. So there's always room to add, you know, we're always like the industry is always looking for more and more people to to join the industry so that they can take on more projects and not you know, have to turn down potential jobs because they just don't have the capacity anymore. So it's definitely like that shortage isn't um, decreasing. It just seems to be a constant demand. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's definitely a lot of opportunities for growth as a lot of the 
uh, company websites that I was looking at say that, you know, they're, they're looking to retain their employees, they're looking for opportunities to advancement, all those great benefits that we kind of talked about before. And um, there's also been a trend where I've noticed that some experienced workers uh, may also be, you know, wanting to start their own company or do some freelance work as well on off days that they're in for an added incentive. So there's uh, lots of opportunities for growth and, and other things that can be done as well. Anybody else have anything to add for input? Brittany, I'll just stop you there in a second. Uh, there's yeah. a question that came up about the language level for potential employees. Is there a specific demand for like a, um, English level, like a minimum English level the, uh, proficiency? I haven't seen anything for my own research on it. Mike, do you have any input? Yeah, well, I would say if, if someone is a good uh, skilled laborer, like the the demand for good workers is insane. So like uh, our, our company was searching up and down all over the place, nonstop all summer and couldn't find anybody. So if, um, if you come in and you're a good worker and you don't know one word of English, I don't care whatsoever. If you're a good worker, you've got the job. And if you're, you know, and if anything, not speaking good English would probably make you a better employee because you're <laughs> less likely to gab with all of the other crew members. So <laughs> that would be my, uh, my opinion on that, you know? So for the most part, you know, I think what's great about the, the industry from like kind of for kind of those, the, the basic, like the entry level positions is that the, the tasks are relatively simple, um, you know, but they're, but they're important. Those tasks of garden maintenance or lawn mowing or snow shoveling, those are simple tasks, but, you know, you can do them very poorly, you know, and you can also do them very well. So, you know, they take, uh, they don't take um, very much to explain or to, you know, go through a, a high level of dialogue or anything like that. I think, um, you know, it's for someone who's passionate and wants to do a good job, I wouldn't think there'd be a, a high level expectation for English language at all. So, send them our way. Yeah. <laughs> And Christy, did you have something to say as well? Um, oh yeah, I was anecdotal, anecdotally, um, like have had many apprentices that are um, connected to our group sponsor program who are, have English as second, like as their second language. Um, and their employers, um, you know, rave about their, their, um, their work and then their ability to do the job. Um, so I don't know, that language is always the barrier to being successful in, in the workplace. It, like Mike said, as long as you're able to, as long as you're a good worker and you're, and oftentimes, yeah, they're often trying to make sure that they're doing the job correctly because of that language barrier. It almost um, sometimes is a, an incentive or not an incentive, but it does a service to that to the project. Um, but um, from our end, I haven't seen anyone have that be like the biggest barrier in terms of hiring. Perfect, thank you. So I'll pass this off to Christy as she is the expert for the uh, answers of, are there any apprenticeships for your landscape or snow removal positions? So I'll turn it off to Christy. Awesome, um, so I'm from Landscape Ontario and I um, work on the horticulture, horticultural technician for 401C apprenticeship program team here. Um, we are a designated group sponsor for the program. So this is one of the um, more prominent apprenticeships um, that is related to our industry. Um, and uh, it's 80% on the job training, 20% um, um, to be completed in school over uh, two 12 week semesters. And it could take approximately three to five years um, to complete the program. But the end goal is um, to receive your Red Seal trade designation and become a journey person. Um, even though the program is three to five years, it, what I love about it is that it's a pretty flexible program. So those that are new to the industry could enter as an apprenticeship or those who have been working in the, um, in the industry who maybe just want to upgrade their certifications can also apply to be apprentices. Um, and it, it can take three to five years. It could take seven years. We've had some apprentices who um, have 
finished a little bit earlier or taken 11 years. It really depends on how quickly you want to get that designation. Um, but there's no um, obligation for time period. And the in-class training is offered in Fanshawe, Algonquin, Humber, and Mohawk. So those, um, those courses are um, taught by a lot of industry professionals who are super passionate about the, the trade. So that's really exciting because um, what's great about this program is to offer kind of a all-encompassing overview of what this industry is like and try to give people different um, um, competencies in the different aspects of the trade. So whether it's um, softscaping, hardscaping, things with irrigation, um, growing, turf, um, it's kind of all, all found in this apprenticeship program. And there's some incentives. There's up to $4,000 that are eligible for those who complete the program at different stages of the program. And there's opportunities for scholarships, bursaries, and loans. And for those that are maybe looking at this as part of their pathway into the industry, um, uh, Landscape Ontario helps support that process. And I think there's another slide. Um, this is a list of all of the um, we don't help facilitate this, these um, apprenticeship programs, but just a list of other um, apprenticeship programs that do get employed by the profession. So there's a wide array of things that um, if you're interested in more maybe specific um, parts of the trade, you could enter those kinds of apprenticeships as well um, and be hired on by the industry. Awesome. Is there anyone else that would like to add on about apprenticeships before we move on to the next slide? All right. Um, so this was um, something that we looked at for what are kind of employers looking in for a candidate. And um, I believe, Mike, this might be what you submitted, um, yeah. if I'm correct. So I'll have it pass over to you. Yeah, I'd say... Um... Yeah, all, I guess all my thoughts for employment were kind of wrapped up into uh, a, a few quick points that I feel like I'm passionate about. So usually when I'm, I feel like I've done, you know, hundreds of, of interviews over uh, the last, you know, 10 years or so, and usually just looking for, I'd say relatively basic things, but they, uh, I think they're important, not just in this industry, but all of them. But um, my first point was just enjoy working in team settings. Um, you, you know, the, the first thing that come up that can come up is maybe an employee that, you know, maybe uh, causes drama or has difficulties working with others or, or taking direction from, from others. Um, probably one of the most valuable traits is just having an employee that you feel like um, you can have work with anybody. You know, in our company, we have about seven different crews that go out day to day. And so when you get an employee that can work with any crew, uh, on any given day is a really valuable thing. Um, you know, sometimes it becomes such a uh, balancing act of personalities that uh, it makes my life really difficult. So an employee that's good in team settings is really valuable. Um, someone who accepts training well and are eager to learn new skills. I think uh, something that I really love in this industry, I find that with knowledge comes a lot of passion. I think like for me growing up, I would have never thought that I would be a, you know, quote unquote landscaper when I grew up. I uh, wasn't a big plant person or um, not really big into like tractors or equipment or cars or, or anything like that. So maybe not like the typical interests that might go into this industry, um, but it was, it was in my family and kind of, so I just kind of had to work it. And then you slowly start asking more questions and learning about plants and uh, the equipment and the, the, you know, stuff like drainage and concrete, you, if you get an employee that gives you the impression that they're going to be asking questions and trying to learn, um, they're going to become passionate about it. So that's something I kind of look for is when I'm doing my interviews, if someone seems generally interested in the industry, um, you know, with, as they learn more, they'll become really passionate and the, the passionate employees are the, are the best ones. Um, Another one I, I put down is work uh, with a pep in their step and are self-motivated. Um, I think an employee that, you know, walks with a good pep is, you know, has a fast pace and has good posture, um, you know, and looks, looks strong and healthy is, is literally like the most 
valuable thing uh, you could have. You could be, uh, I don't know how else to say it. You could be, you know, dumb as a stump, not having any idea of what's going on. But if you're the person on the team that is quick and looks energetic and strong, um, you know, you're, you're easily the standout on the team. So um, that's something uh, uh, I look for. And even with just, just the way people walk, um, whenever I do an interview, we have a, a big farm property here at the Greenhouse Academy uh, where we have about 10 acres. Uh, so whenever I do an interview, uh, I usually just kind of walk the property and we usually maybe do like a 400 meter walk. And in my interview, usually, honestly, I don't really even care what we're talking about uh, or what's on the person's resume. I just like to see how they walk. And, you know, if they drag their feet or slunched over, uh, you know, uh, that's, it's so important to me. I think it's like the most, it's the most important thing. So, um, you know, that to me is, is a really big thing I look for. Um, someone who identifies problems and takes steps to find solutions. And basically what I mean in that is just someone who's not constantly waiting to be told what to do all the time. Um, you know, and it's very easy to maybe identify, you know, something needs to be cleaned. So you take the initiative to go and clean it or, if something is broken, you take the initiative to not just say, Mike, my power tool is broken. You know, maybe you, you know, took the next step to see how we could fix that. You know, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's how employees seem to really separate themselves. You either have a bunch of people standing around waiting to be told what to do or people who kind of self-initiate, um, you know, themselves at work. Um, Treating equipment and vehicles with care. Um, that's maybe just a, a maybe simple, but I just I couldn't even guess the the number of broken brooms and shovels and power equipment and scratches on trucks. Um, it's like endless with repairs and broken equipment. So if you find an employee that seems to care uh, a little bit about those things and appreciates uh, good equipment. Um, is uh, is a valuable thing. Uh, in our company, we kind of always say this story. Um, when I was growing up, I had an apprenticeship with a home builder and uh, the home builder used to always do his interviews where he would um, ask people to bring in their toolbox to the interview and they would open up the toolbox and based on what their toolbox looked like, you could really gauge what type of worker they were. So if you open up their toolbox and there's just crap all over the place, they're probably not the most organized, diligent employee, but if they, uh, um, you know, have a well-organized, pretty toolbox where their equipment is clearly respected, um, you know, that would probably translate into a good worker. Uh, and then lastly, just someone who's respectful uh, to their peers and their clients. I think sometimes something that we typically, I would say, uh, fight in this industry is kind of st stereotypes of, you um, uh, employees being rough or, um, or tough, you know, and uh, sometimes people, employees will think that and they almost fall into it almost by accident. So it's something that we try and fight right off the onset where it's someone who's really respectful and professional. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, just really important. Uh, in our company, I always tell our crews that um, when we're doing our maintenance and our, or maybe our lawn care or our construction jobs, our lawn cutting isn't going to be that much better than the next company. Uh, it's just not. Or our planting skills or weeding skills, you know, we might be better, but we're not going to be that much better. Um, you know, where we get the most compliments in our company is that the crews are um, very friendly. And, and that's probably the, the most important thing uh, to me. They're friendly and approachable. So, um, I don't know, that's just something to, uh, I don't a, a valuable thing, I guess, is someone who's approaching the industry uh, professionally rather than, um, I don't know, taking on that stereotype, I guess. So, Mike, there's a question yeah. that just came up about the criminal records. If you uh, employ, um, if you hire people who have criminal records. Yeah, um, uh, we do personally. I know there's, um, I know like, I can't speak for every company, but um, uh, for us, uh, we have we hire people with with criminal records. So, um, yeah, yeah. Typically, typically, what I say, I try and be um, uh, upfront and honest about it. I kind of 
try and say um, where we've run into problems in the past is when we have someone who maybe has a criminal record or say they've, they've been to jail before or something like that. And I always say during our interview, I say, I, I don't really care. It's your, your, your past is your past. Where I have problems is when after the first day of work, everybody in the company knows your criminal history, you know, and, and it's almost like they, uh, they take pride in that criminal history, if, if you know what I, if you know what I mean. So, um, um, where I'm going with that is I always say that I um, will hire people with a criminal record that the past is their past uh, as long as it truly is their past and they're they're proud to say that it's their past I guess so yeah I appreciate that answer okay thank you mm -hmm. yeah. and then the next slide is um, something that uh, London Training Center has provided and I'm not sure Grant is James in yet Uh, James isn't in yet, but we're all pretty well versed on the whole enchilada here, so no problem. Okay, I'll pass it off to you then. Okay, so what, what we find when we're um, placing people with various landscaping companies, what they typically are looking for is someone that's physically fit, a team player, they're punctual, they have landscape machine experience, which is always helpful, uh, they're reliable ability to work independently where needed, good endurance, ability to learn, mechanical inclination is always helpful, and, and um, my curves are here, experience in something um, that's, you know, related to the work that they've done. So if they have labor experience, or if they have trade-related experience, or something like that, that's always helpful for companies because they can grow with the company. Awesome. Is there anything else to add about some other things for successful candidates before we move forward? Christy, I see that you've unmuted. Um, I, I think all of the uh, points that have been included have been great. I know there's one that um, has been embedded in my mind from like working in the industry to having um, my own um, boss constantly bring it up to all of our new entrant workers. Um, safety and like the value of safety on the job, knowing how to um, use equipment properly or taking the time to, to learn that or understanding that um, safety is important um, aspect of growing in this career is something that um, it would be helpful for a successful candidate um, for employers, just so that, you know, you wanna be trusted to be able to take care of yourself as well as your team members. Some of the equipment that you use while working in the field can, you know, be dangerous using the right PPE when you're on the job is also important. Um, so that that's something that um, is a great part to remember. Perfect, thank you. Um, this is also for Christy is, um, there are some paths and entry points to find work in the sector um, that Christy was really nice to provide um, of things that even I didn't uh, really know about when I was doing my research. And so I looked at these after and these are some great resources. So I will um, pass it off to Christy again. Yeah, so um, we often include these for anyone who's coming into the industry or um, new to looking for a career um, here. So some of them Green Industries, OEAP, and um, SHSM specializations, those are all opportunities to kind of get into um, learning about this industry at a you know, younger age level. So in high school, um, early adults can get into learning about um, horticulture through those kinds of programs. Then there's your standard college and university um, pathways that you can take, um, different diploma programs, university um, programs. And then there's pre-employment programs that are often offered um, depending on the region that you're in um, that allows you to kind of get into the industry maybe prior to getting employed. So we have a GROW program that we facilitate. It's not currently offered in London, but we're hoping to, to get um, expand that way um, and it's a pre-employment program offered to those that are new new to the industry so if you have no previous work experience in horticulture it's a 
I think a one month program. You do work on site at LO. Um, and then there's also a online component that teaches you the basics about horticulture. And then there's off, often pre-apprenticeship programs that are offered um, regionally, depending on which association you're a part of. And those are a couple of, I think, depends on the program can run from three to six months. And it's a similar concept. People who are enthusiastic about the industry, wanting to learn more, but, but, but they don't have um, current employment, they're, they're able to join this program um, and learn about the basics, take classes and courses about horticulture while also having a placement um, with um, industry employers um, that support this program. Um, so those are really cool opportunities for those who are maybe unsure if they are interested, but um, want to try like try to dip their um, foot in the um, industry. And then we have direct to labor um, options. Green Careers Canada is a great resource to find places to look for jobs, as well as information about wages, information about different positions that um, may be of interest to you, as well as descriptions on um, pathways to get to those um, positions. And then landscape.jobs is a new um, job board platform that we've offered for, on Landscape Ontario to support um, anyone looking for a career in um, the horticulture industry. Um, it's a platform that allows job seekers to be matched to landscape um, opportunities. There's a um, part of the platform is that you can complete an assessment and um, it offers employers to be matched to those that complete assessments that um, show scores that are um, well suited to that position that the employer posts. So it's supposed to help support people to find um, employers that would work well with them. And then we have our apprenticeship pathways option, which is the horticulturetechnician.ca website that we run on the apprenticeship team here at Landscape Ontario. And that's to help support that 441C pathway for the horticultural technician program. Um, so you can register through that website or find out more information about um, that pathway as well as um, just any other information about getting into this industry. Christy, there is a question that just came up. Um, you sure. often hear in other industries how hard it is to find an employer for an apprenticeship. What does it look like in this industry? Um, so for, for our program, um, we only help facilitate those who have an employer to get through the apprenticeship program. So most of the time, people who are coming to us are, are those who are already employed and then looking to get upskilled. But this current um, website that I brought up, the landscape.jobs, it's to help facilitate that gap, the, 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 the issue that it's hard to find um, an employer and then, and then also one that will support an apprenticeship. So people can um, opt in for information about apprenticeship. There are people who, who are employers who maybe are interested. They can um, put that as a setting in their profile through this platform. And then there are people, there are also the option for job seekers to set that up as well. And then on our end, we can help facilitate, you know, connecting people to those employers or um, seeing how they can, they can match up to at least connect positions. Um, and then they also can set up specific job um, postings specifying that they are interested in apprenticeship, in apprentices, as well as um, people that are interested in joining the program. So at least that way, there's a, um, you're not having to contact all people about the program, mm -hmm. you'll at least um, have a bank of people that have shown interest as on the employer's side. So um, I'm not sure if we're doing m m like a lot better than other trades, but at least we're trying to come up with strategies to alleviate that problem. That's very helpful. Thank you. No problem. 
Uh, so another um, entryway for finding work in the sector or other paths um, is connecting with a service provider for assistance in finding employment. So we have Goodwill Industries, London Training Center, and myself at Youth Opportunities Unlimited here. Um, I'm just going to see if Grant or Carissa would like to jump in and just talk about their services a little bit um, about how to connect with finding employment in that industry. Yeah, for us, it's pretty simple. If you come and you say you're interested in finding work, and you're interested in landscaping or something of the like, then our job developer will connect you to the employer contact we have. Um, and then we'll start to help you find work. And if you're lacking a resume or interview skills or any of those kinds of things that you might need as a precursor to getting a good job, then we will help you with those aspects as well. Um, so it's really fairly straightforward. Just contact us, let us know, and we'll get a position for you. Awesome. Thanks, Grant. And Chris, are you there? Yeah, um, very similar. Um, you know, we all do pretty much the similar work. Um, I like to focus in on people's skills and, and what their long term job goals are to just better that uh, better retention piece. So, you know, if somebody's working more interested in working with like heavy equipment, connecting you and providing, you know, long term goals on how we can connect people um, so that they can stay in their jobs. Um, we also have funding available, so sometimes if there is an employer who um, really wants somebody to have a DZ license, we can sometimes access that funding in order to get that DZ license, something different, um, and again, to help with that retention piece, so yeah. Awesome, thank you. And the next part too is just that you can apply for entry level jobs, such as the crew member, uh, crew member landscaper, um, with you know uh, some of our employers that are here today, such as Crosby Landscape and TALC Landscaping. Um, so you can apply on their job ads on their website, on Indeed, on the job ads that maybe. Um, Christy has with Landscape Ontario. And I also noticed that there's a few companies that are hosting virtual job fairs as well. Um, Mike, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I guess not, not anything that's, that's not written there. Sounds like TLC has a cool virtual hiring event. We don't have one of those, but, uh, um, I would just say that we're, we're constantly, constantly looking for people. So, uh, we pretty much always have an ad going on Indeed, uh, ads on Kijiji, ads on Night Hunter, ads everywhere. And, um, just applying directly to our website or, or sending in a random email or whatever, all candidates are looked at and, um, pretty much pretty much hiring all the time if you're someone who calls in um you know specifically looking for a job in landscaping um you're uh i know i think we, we most all companies would be very interested right away i'm sure so and mm -hmm. if you have a just i guess even just saying if someone calls in and they have a driver's license they're hired immediately over the phone so it's such a it's so difficult finding people with driver's licenses that they're you know, they're, they're scooped immediately. So, yeah. 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 And then also, Mike, I'll let you speak a little bit more about Greenhouse Academy as another entry path into the sector as well. Yeah. Greenhouse Academy, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a unique thing if you've never heard about it before. So, um, Greenhouse Academy is a not-for-profit organization. Um, uh, we started about five years ago, uh, we're uh, a 60,000 square foot greenhouse facility that grows uh, sapling trees and uh, native wildflowers. And uh, we're a, a, a functioning uh, wholesale nursery, uh, but we grow all of, our, um, all of our plant material with students and participants in uh, uh, looking for job training. So um, we have programs available that are say annual memberships, or workshops that people can uh, sign up for um, and do do training where it's emphasizing a lot of a lot of soft skills and introduction to landscaping, but also just general just general workplace skills. And the idea is that you can come into a nursery, um, join the team, and but make mistakes and ask questions in a, a comfortable environment. Um, uh, yeah, and, and do it while working among, amongst trees in a, in a beautiful facility. Um, when we originally started, um, we were uh, originally focused on students that were in high school who, uh, who don't necessarily do very well in the classroom. We were kind of approached, we were in talks with the school board about just students that 
there was a large dropout rate in uh, London high schools, and there was just an emphasis on students not doing well sitting down in the classroom learning. So we said, well, why don't you bring them to our greenhouses and we'll teach them? Uh, and we, we put them to work and tried to emphasize learning through uh, working and getting your hands dirty and, and stuff like that. And a lot of students that struggle in the classroom environment um, really strive in the workplace. Um, so that was kind of our uh, mission statement in a way to be able to reach people who are maybe uh, haven't been reached in the typical system type thing. And um, from there, we started uh, seeing groups of all ages. We've seen groups from grade one all the way to grade 12 to college students, uh, Fanshawe College, um, anyone looking for training. We do groups that are for um, special needs. Um, um, groups for, we've done groups from high schools that are English second language and stuff like that. So um, we're always looking for opportunities to reach new people. And then, uh, yeah, and then we got kind of linked up with, with YOU and Fanshawe College to offer a program that we tried to do last spring. Um, which we might, we'll probably get into, but um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of who we are. So we're constantly looking to make new connections and, and find, uh, find people who are interested in our, in our services. We're still relatively new. Um, so, um, yeah, new and, and developing, searching for relationships and, and trying to find the best ways to reach people who are in need of our types of services. So. Mm -hmm. And then for my shameless plug of being the uh, Youth Opportunities and Limited Representative in collaboration with uh, Micah Greenhouse Academy and Fanshawe College, our YES program, which is for youth between the ages of 15 and 30 who are not in education, employment or training, um, can take an engaging three-week program to gain hands-on experience in landscaping training and nursery production. Um, so we provide transportation to and from the Greenhouse Academy and we provide full PPE um, for everyone that comes into the program. Uh, they get an Ontario Parks Association certificate, learning about different types of equipment, uh, and also learning about nursery production and also soft skills in the workplace. So we're super excited. Mike and I had this all planned last year, and the pandemic just made things unable to work with all the restrictions. So we are more than prepared uh, for next March. So it starts March 22nd or March 21st, I believe, um, is our date. There is a question that just came up about the location of the Greenhouse Academy. Where is it located exactly? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just writing it in. So we're um, 5101 Dundas Street um, uh, in London. We're basically the, the eastern boundary of London out by the airport um, out East London. So um, technically, when you look us up on Google Maps, we fall under Thorndale. So people think that we're like super far away from from London, uh, but we're not. We're uh, every everyone we serve is is uh, is in London. So um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so fine. Yeah, no problem. So, and um, yeah. And below is all of our contact information, and I'm sure that we'll all be putting it in the chat as well to connect with. So um, we have connections, uh, I mean, contact information for um, our Ser Employment Ontario service providers, um, from Micah Greenhouse Academy, uh, Christy at Landscape Ontario, and the uh, phone number for TLC Landscaping. And um, I think now we'll take any questions that may have come up in the chat. Well, you guys have been really good. You've been answering questions as mm -hmm. they were coming. So awesome. Uh, the only another question about the, uh, the greenhouse is, is it accessible by a bus? Or, or do you need car to get there? Uh, yeah, so it, it is not. It, it's not on a, um, like a city transit bus line. Uh, okay. No, it's just, just out of London for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so awesome. that's why it's been yeah in, in, important with our uh, kind of relationship with Brittany and stuff that they were uh, providing those services for the uh, for the busing and, and stuff like that. That's always kind of the, the first question that everyone asks. So the fact that we were able to come up with something to to figure that out was was great. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, with our landscaping training um, in partnership with Micah Greenhouse Academy, is we are able to uh, provide transportation with Voyager um, to and from downtown at the YOU Cafe. Um, so youth get to meet up at the YOU Cafe and they get transportation to and from. And let's say for an example, if the youth is really struggling that day and, and just can't 
make it for the rest of the shift and it's, you know, we start at 930, but at 11, you know, an emergency comes up or they're just not feeling well, then we don't have to have them stick it out for the rest of the day. We can um, also have funds in our budget to take a taxi ride home uh, to where they are or downtown as well, because we don't want transportation to be a barrier for someone that maybe they can only handle a few hours um, a day and, and, you know, they're building up towards the full day in the classroom. Um, we can definitely make that arrangement as well. That is amazing. Uh, if there's any more questions, guys, um, this would be the perfect time right now to ask those questions before I'm going to let everybody go. <laughs> Maybe we would just wait another minute or so just to give a chance to ask questions. I personally learned a lot of valuable information. Like, thank you so much, guys. Like, honestly, like, you think that you work you know some stuff and but you, there's always something new to learn like absolutely amazing information i really appreciate that just looking to see if there's any more questions i guess up. i had a question for mike um do you have you guys ever hired people that have gone through the greenhouse academy training yeah yeah we've had um yeah we had uh, a couple of students actually that uh they had started with us when they were in grade nine, and uh, we were seeing them every single year um, through through programming with their high school. We had they would come out on field trips in their, their classroom, and then uh, once they were doing that for multiple years and graduating from grade twelve, we were like their first call of uh, an employer after they had graduated. Uh, uh, yeah, so we we grabbed them, and and uh, they've worked with us for for a good year or so since then. So. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really cool, and, and especially that we get to develop like a, we get to develop a, I don't know a different relationship with them. A lot of we've had a lot of students, especially when they come from the high school system, they come here. Um, I don't know. I almost want to say like really vulnerable and almost feeling like they're they're stupid or not good at anything, and uh, they come here and almost get a, a new sense of. Uh, like belonging and purpose and that they're good at something and it, we kind of always go back to these kind of some of those points I was talking about where they seem like so simple of those traits that we're looking for in candidates um, but no one seems to really show them very well you know so the Greenhouse Academy we, we just push kind of these principles like really really hard and um, you know these simple soft skills that you know hopefully if and even if they they are hired by Crosby. If they don't want to work with us forever, hopefully they've, you know, uh, developed some amazing uh, habits and characteristics to take on, take on forever. So, um, well, that's another point. Yeah. Um, the landscaping and snow removal tends to be a young person's game. Um, so you get a lot of students probably applying for uh, this job, but how do you keep them, or do they stay, or? You know, do you have older workers? Like, is that even feasible in this type of environment? Mm -hmm. I'd say so for sure. I'd say that's, um, I'd say almost uh, maybe a, a misconception, I, I would say. Like my, uh, just in our company, my, probably my top workers, I have one person who's 62 this year, another one who's 49, another one who's 46. And, um, you know, a lot of times it's like those people, even when I say like working with a pep in your step or working with good posture, you know, even someone walking around with good posture, even if they're not walking super fast, you can still look strong and fit and be a leader on site. Like those characteristics of, you're right, we, we do get a lot of young applicants who need a lot of training you know, and uh, so you need trainers and you need managers and, and stuff like that. So we're always really hoping that if we get someone who's a young person, you know, and we try and map out for them, it's like, you can be here for a long time and there's um, lots of room for development and this is what it is. And it doesn't always mean, you know, running a wheelbarrow for the rest of your life or, or something like that. You just need to show those characteristics of uh, being a good leader, you know? So. So you can lead those young guys and girls. <laughs> Any more questions? I think this is it. 
Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us and share very, well, a lot of valuable information. And there you go, Wendy Richards. From, thank you, everyone. <laughs> so thank you so much and enjoy your day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.